To probably oversimplify it, your open water course teaches you how not to kill yourself. In the advanced open water course, you are going to start to learn how to actually become a good diver. So if you're interested in finding out more about taking this course, then stick around. Hey guys, welcome back, and if you're new here, welcome! My name's Olivia and I'm a professional scuba diver. I make videos every single week about scuba tips, training, and travel, so if you're interested in any of those topics, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and let's dive right into the video. So I'm gonna go over the structure of the course real quick for you, just so that everything kind of makes sense as we go. So there's mainly two sections of the course. There's your classwork and your open water dives. For your classwork, you're going to do either actually physically in the classroom or you'll do the e-learning option. And then for the dives, that's going to be open water and you're going to complete five dives. For the advanced open water course, there are two sections that are required and three sections that are up to you to pick. The two required sections are deep and navigation. So for the other three, um, sometimes the environment doesn't always allow for all of those options. Um, so just make sure that you talk with a dive shop and see kind of which ones interest you um, and also work for the logistics with the dive shop. So now let's talk a little bit more about the first section of your course, your classwork. So in the classwork, you are either going to do e-learning or in a classroom. So I think most, if not a lot of dive shops nowadays don't even offer classroom work anymore. It's pretty much all e-learning, but I'm gonna kind of briefly go over the two just in case. If you are in a classroom, you will be given a physical book. When you're doing your book work, you're just going to read the five sections and then do the knowledge reviews at the end and you'll uh, meet in a classroom with an instructor and go over those knowledge reviews, ask any questions um, and that kind of stuff. That is physical classroom work. If you are doing the e-learning, you will complete the five sections um, for the corresponding dives online and you can do that all from your computer and at your own pace. And then when you meet with this instructor, usually there's like a quick review quiz that just confirms that you are actually the person behind the computer um, and not like mom and dad or somebody else doing all the work for you. All right, now let's move on to our open water dives. So like I said, there are five dives that you will complete for your advanced open water course. Two of those will be deep and navigation. For your deep dive, you will go to at least 60 feet deep and no deeper than 100. And during this dive, you'll get to um, see things like how color is affected with depth, and you may even get to experience the feeling of a little bit of nitrogen narcosis and how to safely handle that. For your navigation dive, you're going to have a compass and learn how to use it to guide your way around underwater. You'll learn a couple of search patterns and also other ways to navigate without using a compass as well. Then like I said, for your next three dives, you're going to work with your dive shop to see what you like and what works for them. There's a huge list to pick from. I will insert a graphic over here. So this shows you a bunch of options that you have to take for your other three dives, um, but there's even more than that. Um, so like I said, talk to your instructor, talk to the dive shop, um, and they can go over what your options are. Some ones that I highly recommend, um, peak performance buoyancy. In my opinion, having your buoyancy mastered is the difference between you being a good diver and a bad diver. To me, buoyancy is the most important skill when you're diving. All other factors come afterwards, but if you don't have your buoyancy mastered, um, then you're going to be a mess in the water. So for that reason, I think the peak performance buoyancy is a great option for one of your dives. A couple of dives that I think are particularly fun, night dives, I love night diving. I know some people don't like the dark water, but a lot of cool creatures come out at night that you wouldn't get to see in the day and it's a whole nother experience. And I just think night dives are super, super cool. If you're interested in diving wrecks in the future, then wreck diving is also an option. And if there is a wreck available for you to dive within limits, 
Um, I think that is also another great and super cool option to take. A great option if you're interested in going on to take your rescue diver course is to do the search and recovery dive. Um, that's going to kind of check off some boxes for your rescue course um, after you take your advanced open water. So I highly recommend choosing that one if that is the case for you. So once you have successfully completed all your classwork and all five of those dives, you will get signed off and get your advanced open water certification. This is going to diversify your dive experience, make you a better diver, and also certify you to 100 feet, which is going to open up your opportunities for dive locations around the world a whole lot more. So let me know what certification level you are in the comments below, as well as what certification level you're hoping to get to. And that's everything. If you made it this far and you haven't already, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. You can also follow me over on Instagram at fully submerged scuba. And I'll see you guys next week until we dive again. Bye. This is probably the latest I've ever filmed. Um, where did I put my, oh, I'm filming on my phone. <laughs> ah, anyway, this is the latest I've ever filmed. And um, it's like eight o'clock, not even eight o'clock yet. Um, is anyone else not a late night person? I am definitely a morning person. Howdy, folks. <laughs> no.